All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video on the channel today. So today is another rail trail video. Today, we are going to the base coast. That is the rail trail, which runs on the one Thaggy branch line, which branches off from Iora on the South Gippsland Railway. So we're going to see what's left. We're going to see the trestle bridges, such as the Bourne Creek trestle bridge. See if we can find any other station remnants along the line. I know most of it's been uh, taken down and there's barely any remnants left. We are going to see what we can find and make our way back down towards the state mine. Take a look back at the history of this once beautiful railway, which ran side by side to the beach, which would have made for an amazing railway. So let's get into the video. Roll the intro. <laughs> The Wonthaggy Line branches off from Niora on the South Gibson Railway. The line was opened in 1910 and closed in 1978. The line's main purpose was to serve the Wonthaggy State Coal Mine, but the line also had passenger and goods services travelling the line. The peak of the mine was in 1926, producing over 2,000 tonnes of coal per day. The Victorian Railways bought about 80% of the coal that was produced here. The passenger services on the line ran about 12 times per week. It was about a four hour journey from Flinders Street Station in Melbourne all the way down to Wonthaggy. In the 1950s, the diesel rail motors were introduced and they had shortened the journey times dramatically. I believe they took an hour off the journey. In the 1960s, the need for coal for the Victorian Railways was reduced heavily thanks to the power of the diesel locomotives. With more and more of the diesels being sent out, such as the T-Class and the Y-Class, the steam trains were taking a step back. And in 1968, the Wontagi State Mine had shut. With one of the line's main purposes to serve the state mine, with that being closed, it would eventually lead to the demise of the passenger services as well. And eventually, the last train had had its run. The last train on the line was one of the 153 horsepowered Walker rail motors. The line had closed in 1978, 10 years after the state mine had closed. The track was removed in 1988, and the southern section from Wulamai to Wontagi is now the Base Coast Rail Trail. So welcome back to Nyora Station, for the third time on the channel. But we've never spoken about the history of Nyora Station. So the station opened on the 11th of November in 1890, and closed on the 24th of July in 1993. Nyora Station is also now the start of the Great Southern Rail Trail. The rail trail now, I believe, heads all the way down to Yarram. It's definitely a long, long way to go. Now, what we're doing here in Iora is we are looking for the branch off to the Wontagi line. All right, so we are on the Great Southern Rail Trail, and right here is, I think, the start of the Wontagi, well, the Niora to Wontagi Rail Trail. I don't know at the moment if that's actually the... According to the maps, this is the start of the rail trail, but there's no signs indicating that it is. But on the map, it shows that that bit of the rail trail sort of goes around the... Uh, the footy grounds on that side and then it sort of curves off and then it just sort of stops on the map which is kind of hard to see but you can see the alignment on the map so so i'm going to try and drive around now and sort of see uh where the rest of the alignment is and keep going from there all right so i've driven just about a kilometer down from Nayara station and i am at the spot where the one baggy line branched off from the main line so I am standing where it was exactly on the map. It's right here in this area that it would have branched off from and headed right towards Wontaggi. There's no remains left to actually see where it was here at the spur off of the track. Uh, they're all I can see, really. All I can see is this one sleeper that's sort of going in the direction that the line would have gone, but I don't know if that's just there because it got taken out of the main line or if that was actually a remnant of a last sleeper going towards Wontaggi. So I've just come from that way, which is towards Nyora, and as you head this way, that's heading towards Karambara. And the spur off, yeah, is just about there, heading up towards that way. Yeah, so all that on that side is sort of where the alignment would have been, I believe. And, you know, obviously I'd like to get there, but there's a lot of trees in the way. I'm not sure if that's all farmer's land and whatnot, so I don't really want to get into someone's property. Don't want to do that. And there is a 93 mile marker board here as a reference to where we are on the Great Southern Rail Trail. All 
All right, I'm walking back towards my car and I'm gonna head up the road that I parked on, which is Barry's Road, which follows the alignment. So let's keep going. All right, so I have found some of the railway alignments going in between some of the farmland. And here it is. This is heading towards Wonthaggy. Yeah, it was unbelievably windy out here today. So uh, just going to talk over these few little clips. But yes, you can see the embankment. It's still there, looking good. It's very visible. And this was a little scenic part of the railway that would have once been great to travel on. All right, so I'm going to take a couple more pictures. Then we're going to make our way further down towards Wonthaggy. All right, so we made it to Kernet Station and it's still here. The platform mound and the supporting beams that hold up the station are still intact and they're still there, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, you can easily see that the station would have been on top here. You can see the mound and all the beams coming out of the ground to hold up the station platform. Pretty cool. And you can see the railway corridor. Uh, that's going down to Wontaggy. And as we head back this way, that is towards Nyora. So Kernet Station was equipped with a 10,000 gallon tank and as well as a crane, both within walking distance of the Kernet General Store, which I believe closed the same year the railway did. And as many stations on this line as well, they opened and closed with the lines opening and closure. So the station now, if you want to come and look at this, is in front of the Kernet Food and Wine Store. Just in front of it is a nice big park. There's a couple of little bits and bobs in this park, but if you walk straight down, eventually you run into the station. And it's a pretty cool thing to see here as well. So as I was saying on the map, it does say the Nyora to One Thaggy Rail Trail. But as you can see, there is no rail trail here. It's just the abandoned remnants of the line of what it used to be here. So as you can see, it isn't a rail trail, even though the maps are showing that it is a rail trail. All right, so that was Kernet Station. Now time to head on to Glen Forbes and have a look at what's left over there. Let's go. Here at Glen Forbes, there's not much to actually see of the physical railway remnants, but there are boards and information about the railway and history of the area. It was pretty cool to have a quick read and have a look at some of these photos and just reminisce about what the line would have been like. And as always, it's great to see the railway being remembered in this little community reserve. There's a basketball court and a playground, which is pretty much where the station would have been. All right, so that was Glen Forbes and the community recreation reserve. It's time to move on to the next spot. Well, actually on the way to the next spot was this beautiful view overlooking the area and you can see the railway down below. Well, what's left of it. It's pretty cool to have a view of the alignment from this high up as you can sort of visualize and really trace where the railway was. All right, guys, I'm in Woolamai and this is where the rail trail has actually begun. So it's begun before Anderson where it actually says the Base Coast Rail Trail starts. Unless it's something different, I'm not too sure. But there is a footpath which is coming from Wollamai Station. I don't think there's anything left there, so I'm not going to check it out. I'm going to keep going to Anderson. Uh, I'm going to keep going to Anderson where the rail trail actually does start. It's been an awesome drive so far. It's been very scenic and I'm loving it so much. So yeah, let's keep going. This is the area that Anderson Station was. Operational until the line's closure in 1978. The car park is where the station used to be, and this is the official start of the Base Coast Rail Trail. Opposite the car park, I can see bits and pieces of what I think are remnants of the railway station. Being opposite the station, I reckon this is probably a goods platform or something else to do with the other side of the working area. There was a beam running through the ground, and then there was also bits of cement, and then in the cement, there was a piece of rail, so I thought that was pretty strange. And also some wooden posts in the ground. There is a bench and a table to sit down as you make your way through the rail trail. Now this area is marked as historical railway area. If you know what was here, let me know in the comments below.
This is the first trestle bridge you see on the Base Coast Rail Trail. This is just before you get to the beach side. You can see the beach from here and it is a nice view. There are a couple of bridges before this one on the abandoned section of the line, but I didn't have too much time to dabble and try to explore and find them. But now let's go see the big one. This is the historic Bourne Creek Trestle Bridge, the most famous and the most recognizable spot on the Wontaggi line. As we were talking about in the start of the video, we would see plenty of videos of the locomotives going over this trestle bridge. And still pretty cool to see some of the rail in the ground. I'm actually here at the Bourne Creek Trestle Bridge quite a lot. Number one, great beach spot, great barbecue, and it's great to always come down and see the beautiful area around here. So I'm here with many other people, a lot of photographers who come down here to capture the southern lights. The southern aurora is very visible from here in Kilcunda due to low light pollution. I'm yet to see it with the naked eye, so the aurora hunt keeps going on. All right, it's hot today, it's 25 degrees, it's a good one. Uh, but yeah, that was the Bourne Creek Trestle Bridge. We're gonna keep heading down, see what else there is on the rail trail. But yeah, this is easily my favorite spot. One of my favorite spots ever to be honest. So yeah, let's keep going. Okay, so now I'm at the GPS coordinates of Dalliston Station. I mean, there's nothing here, obviously. I mean, a lot of this railway has been taken down except for some of the signature things like Trestle Bridge and Wontaggi Station, which we will go to. But yeah, not too much here, but this is where Dalliston Station was. Now, actually, just after Dalliston Station, the line actually branched off to one of the mines, to the Dudley area extension of the mine. But anyway, I'm just gonna take a quick look around and then go see the other bridge and then keep going. And actually a little bit further up just before the station is this little concrete slab here. And there's actually a rail piece over here as well. And it's sort of embedded in the concrete as well. So it's not the station, but it's railway remnants. So pretty cool. So just past Dallas the station is the Powlett River Rail Bridge. The trestle bridge is pretty well looked after, obviously as it's being converted to a rail trail. It kind of looks like there was another bridge next to this one, or maybe the bridge was longer, or it had been moved over this side for some reason. I'm not sure how that would have worked with the original alignment. So if anybody knows what these extra posts in the water are, please let me know. And this has just been such a scenic drive, a scenic day, I'm loving it. South Gibson is always beautiful. With the Powlett River Bridge done, it's time to head over into One Thaggy. Let's go. Okay guys, we are in some of the historical areas for the state mine and I'm just standing here at what looks like the old spot for the turntable. Got some bricking over here. And on the other side, there's another brick wall over there. Some metal basin thing over there, not sure what it is. The 70 foot long or the 21.3 meter long turntable that was here served the locomotive depot for the state mine. This turntable here was one of five, including Nyora, Corumbara, Leangatha and Foster, all having their own turntable. The five turntables out here in the Gippsland were all the same size. This is so cool. I just parked up and there's all these things you can just see. And again, the state mine, to actually go to the state mine and pay a visit, it is free and you can do that whole thing uh, with no payment, which is pretty cool. So if you do want to do that, get down to the state mine, check them out. But right now we're in just some of the grounds in the historical areas. And I'm just seeing so much cool stuff like 
you know, we've got this old building here. There's like a water tanker there. Maybe that was one of the railway water tankers. It's pretty amazing. You know, there's some old mining equipment over here and here and like, yeah, we're gonna go have a look at all that stuff. It's really cool. So I wasn't sure where I was at the exact time when I filmed this, but now that I've been home and had a look, this is the Karak extension of the railway line. And this old decaying building that we're seeing here is the number five brace. All right, so over here it says this is the loading shed and the crane. Uh, so I'm not sure what this all was for, what it did. If someone does know, please leave me in the comments below. Maybe this is what helps load some of the steam engines and their wagons with coal from the mines. But here it says oil store. And there's this metal contraption here. Looks like one of those carts that, you know, lowers people down into the mines. Really cool. I can't imagine being a miner and being lowered down in one of these. I'm a pretty tall guy and my head's almost hitting the roof in these things. What a bit scary going underground in these. Jeez. <laughs> Don't know what that does, but it moves. Unstable mine shaft. So in there is one of the openings into the mine. There's a few different pathways, so I'm going to follow the one that's going up the hill and see where that takes us. Walking up this bit. As you walk through these little bits and passages, you just see all rusted up pieces of metal there, bit of rail there, something in the bushes there. Always something to look at. On the top of this hill, and it looks like a telephone wire for the railway. And it's an actual rail piece itself. So by the looks of this, I'm thinking that this is the side that the railway used to link up to uh, the building over there. And the trains would either run behind to the turntable, turn around and then go back this way because heading out that way is back towards Nyora. All right, we're going down. The sign there, what does that say? Something haulage. So that sign says West Area Haulage. There's a bunch of... Uh, concrete over here, some some pillars and beams throughout. As we come out, this is the other side of the building. That's the name of this place, number five brace. Wasn't meaning to rhyme that, but anyway. We're standing on top of a tall embankment and at the end of it is a railway buffer. So we're pretty close to finding the railway inspection pits as well. I know it's a bit glary, but here is a shot of the railway buffer. See, it's sitting up here, pretty high, up on this embankment. So we just walked from there and the alignment meets the main line just about here. So I haven't found the inspection pit. So yeah, if I run into the inspection pit on the way back, great. If I don't, we're just gonna go straight to one thing station. Yeah, I didn't find it. So um, if anyone knows where it is, uh, can you leave a comment below? Tell me, I'll come back another time and I'll see it. All right, not even joking. As I film that, I now see it. <laughs> I swear this happens to me too much. First with the wombats, and now this. As soon as I said it. Anyway, we got it. Let's go. So yeah, I just did not see any of these signs because that back one actually says maintenance pits. Yeah, it's a bit sketchy. I'm in thorn bushes. But I'm going to see it. We're standing on top of some concrete blocks here as well. And here we are, the locomotive maintenance pits. Awesome. So this is on the right side of the buffer. So the buffer and that embankment is just about over here and the pits are on the left side of that. And they're coming down all the way this way. So there's one here, one here, and they sort of keep going along a pretty, a pretty decent long way. So I'm guessing they would have had multiple locomotives in a single line if they needed to. Pretty cool. A lot of history in this small little area here at the mines. So for any of you who are wanting to come down here and check this out, this is part of the State Coal Mine walking tracks. And you can find all of this. Sorry, a bit windy. You can see what I've just seen here in this little space all for free. So yeah, get down here and check it out. All right.
right, finally, we are heading to the last stop, Wantagi Railway Station and the Good Shed. Let's go. Wantagi Station was the end of the line. The two extensions from the station was to the Karak and Eastern Area Mine Extensions. Operated until the line's closure in 1978. The station building is now preserved and used as a museum. The station platform and retaining wall is held up pretty well. Also, the Good Shed, which looks really great. Also sitting here is a crane that was used for the railways back in the day, a very interesting piece of history. Great to see lots of railway infrastructure being preserved. And my luck again, the museum was closed by the time I got down here, so we'll have to come back and see it another day. There's also the steel structure which looks like it would have been used for the mines. And here in the Apex Park behind the station, there's a little concrete bit which is where the locomotive at the state mine was once plinth. We've actually still got a wooden steam train plinth and preserved on the railway tracks here in the Apex Park, going over the Trestle Bridge as well. So here at Wontagi Station is the end of the Base Coast Rail Trail. Alright, that was the Nairo to Wontagi Railway Line. This was a harder video to make. I did not think it would be that long of a day. I thought this would be one of my easier videos. Anyway, it was a good day. It was a great day to be out and doing something in the beautiful Melbourne weather. So yeah, if you liked the video, give us a like, subscribe, comment below. We are almost at 1,000 subscribers, so please subscribe to the channel and enjoy the content. Follow me on my socials at TikTok, Instagram at Victorian underscore Steam and Facebook at Victorian Steam. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care and peace.